guys, welcome to this edition of Bounce Masterclass. Today promises to be an interesting edition because we have our first female guest on the show. None other than the CEO of Life Bank, Mrs. Temigewa Tubosun. They are in the business of saving lives and we are going to have a conversation with her. Thank you. Hi, Temi. Hi, how Hi. are you? Good Hi. morning. Finally, good Hi. to finally nice meet to you. Nice to see you. Please yeah. have a seat. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is Bam Bam. And Teddy. <laughs> Download Bounce News app. Your news. Your edge. Okay. So, Temi, thank you for for finally for availing of this opportunity. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It was really hard yeah. putting you down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, when we hear of Life Bank, mm. what comes to mind mm. to many people is mm. an investment bank, maybe a pension <laughs> uh, administrator. Yeah, so, way more money than we so, do. <laughs> yeah. So what, what exactly is Life Bank? Right. So Life Bank is a medical distribution company. We help hospitals find the medical products they need. Uh, and we move it to them in the right condition and on time. And we're able to do all of this in 55 minutes. So the way it works is very simple. You know, the first thing that happens is data. We want to get inventory information of the blood that's available in the market. So we have suppliers. Um, we have about, about over 60 suppliers that come to us every morning telling us, I'm supplier A, I have this many pints of O negative blood, this many pints of this, this and that, and this is the price point that I'm you know, selling it for. And then, um, then once hospitals need the blood, let's say there's a mom who's, who's, uh, who just delivered a baby and the, the mom is in the hospital and they need blood, uh, she needs about four pints of O negative, let's even say it's at 3 a.m. in the morning. Mm. Um, because we already have the inventory, we know the blood bank that's open at that time, we know exactly the lay of the land, we can find the blood for the, for the, um, for the hospital, we can go to the blood bank, pick it up, we can transport it to the hospital in the right condition, and then we can, we, we can do all of this from the time the hospital orders to the time we deliver in 55 minutes. Mm. So as, as you explained this, what was going in through my mind was, how much work mm. actually went into this before it became a business? You know, it, it was quite a lot of work. It was a business from day one, to be quite honest. I always knew that the business model, I didn't start until the business model made sense. Yes. Like I had been, you know, interested in blood and I'd been doing a lot of work around blood, a lot of voluntary work around blood for a very long time. Mm. But until I found a business model that could work, I didn't really, you know, work on it full time or like structure it like uh, a project. But um, yeah, there was a lot of work. We had to figure out how to do, how to do distribution in Nigeria. Mm. On-demand distribution, right? So the, our distribution is also diff a little bit different from normal distribution. Yes. Normally, it's like you can schedule it, you can you know, pick up a few, you know, one, like a few orders for the same trip, on the same trip, but we didn't have something like that. You have to deliver in the right condition, on-demand. So that was really, really difficult. Um, you have to make sure that, and we're also moving medical products, yes. sensitive medical products. So you need to make sure that your routine, you know, your system, um, your coaching platform is state of the art. Yeah, be before we proceed, I would right. like, like to take you to back to what actually inspired you right. to, to venture into, right. into a business like this. Right. You so, know, because it's not a regular business, anyone true. can just do it. Right. Uh, so I've been, so I have extensive experience in, in healthcare. Um, so I've always worked in healthcare since I started my career. Um, I worked in the management side of healthcare. So I never, I'm not a doctor. I actually don't have any healthcare or medical degree, but I always worked in the management side of it. You know, I worked at WHO in Switzerland. I worked at, with UNDP doing supply chain work in, in East Africa. Uh, so I, I had some experience in healthcare, in supply chain and things like that. Um, so when I, I discovered a few years back that the biggest cause of maternal mortality is something called postpartum hemorrhage, mm. uh, which means a mom delivers a baby and then she starts bleeding and then she dies. 
So it's like literally the, the biggest thing that kills women in Nigeria, in the world. Not just women, not just pregnant women, but all women. Like it's such a huge problem in the developing world that it is, and, 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 and here's the thing, once a mom is bleeding, the only thing you can do is to you know, stop the bleeding and replace the blood she's lost. Right? Even if you can't stop the bleeding, you can keep replacing the blood until her body learns to clot, right? until the wound closes up. So it's really such a huge, huge, huge you know, uh, problem. And when I discovered it, I, I knew that my experience, my background, my passion all came together to you know inspire me and, and to be honest i was quite um reluctant uh because entrepreneurship it's not easy yeah. entrepreneurship in nigeria is definitely not yes. easy at all um so i was really like um i was i was reluctant mm -hmm. in the beginning mm -hmm. but then i had um so i had a baby about four years ago okay and that sort of pushed the question and really 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 forced me to focus on doing this type of work Awesome. Yeah. So, and then came the technology aspect. Mm -hmm. So, how, how much of a role has technology played in what you've, you are doing and what you've achieved so far? Well, we're a technology business. Yes. Uh, we primarily think of ourselves as a technology and a logistics business okay. um, that is you know, focused on healthcare sector. Okay. So we don't actually think of ourselves as a healthcare business. Okay. We think of ourselves as a technology and a logistics okay. business. Okay, so, so, so uh, we'll, uh, let's take, take me back to mm. exactly how technology, mm -hmm. you know, uh, drives your business. Yeah, Where absolutely. does tech, tech come in? Right, so I mean, tech, tech is everything. So the first thing I would say is tech, we use tech to make sure that there's blood, right? We use tech to build it. We, so we built a donor platform okay. that helps anybody to be like you can become a blood donor. Mm -hmm. you, you can sign up to become a blood donor today, mm -hmm. and you can book appointments in the closest blood bank to you. You can earn small rewards. So we gamified it a little bit. So that's the first thing tech is. Um, that's the first thing we're using technology mm -hmm. for. Uh, the second thing we use technology for is, um, like I mentioned, inventory yes. data, right? You can't, if you want to do precision delivery, precision, um, you know, matching, um, and, and also predict need, you need data. You need to get inventory data. You need to get, you know, um, a lot of information in your platform. Uh, so technology helps us do that. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned, 60 suppliers, they need to tell me how many stock they have every day. Yes. I need to know, and I, I can't call 60 people. You know, technology helps us, you know, work on that system. Mm -hmm. And then I mentioned this d discovery as well. So when hospitals want to find out what blood we have, we have a technology platform for mm -hmm. that. Um, and then, of course, delivery too. We use technology. We use mapping technology. We use GIS technology. Uh, we use quite a lot of tech um, to do everything we do. So the whole thing is tech driven. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, you, you are three years in running. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. What has the response been? What, mm -hmm. what much impact mm -hmm. do you say? Right. So I think we have um, we've had a significant amount of impact. I mean, for us at Life Bank, every day when we come to work, we literally save people's lives. So our impact is not even like, you know, it's not it's direct. It's yes. not indirect in any way. It's direct impact. We know every time we have an order, there's somebody bleeding somewhere in this country, and we're able to find the blood that will save their lives. So there's been direct impact. In the last two and a half years, we've mm -hmm. moved about 10,000 pints, 10,200 mm. pints. Um, we have uh, moved it to 1,800 patients mm. in Lagos alone. Um, we have about 60 suppliers. Um, every single day, like I mentioned, every single day, when that phone rings, when we get an order, it is to save someone's life. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we are going to go on a break now, and then when we come back, we continue the conversation with Temi. I hope you are learning so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kiki. Shion Kentebe. Temi Okolawo. Je m'appelle Ufoma McDermott. Bronke Odusoya. Shion Wajaya. Quinto Antonio. And you're watching Bounce. 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 Bounce TV. To see a lot more. Take care to subscribe, okay? You're welcome back. You're still watching Bounce Masterclass. 
and we are still talking with Temi Giwa Tubosu, who is the CEO of Life Bank Nigeria. So, Temi, thank you so far. Thank you. Okay, um, I, I want to ask you about running a business in a country like Nigeria, mm, mm. you know, and logistics for that matter, with paucity of infrastructure and all that. So, what, what has been your major pain point? Mm. Um, so the major pain point is like the amount of capital it goes into building a logistics platform um, and finding patient capital to really help us do that. Um, our business is at the you know, cross section of impact and, and, and really business. So patient capital is so important for us. Um, so really so that when you say patient capital, I mean, mm -hmm. So capital that is not trying to double their money tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> right? So capital that is a little bit a patient. kind of medium term, medium exactly, to long term Exactly, exactly. People who yeah. want to be part of your story for quite a long time, yeah. that it isn't you know double my money, let me take my money out tomorrow. Yeah. So really, like you know, we actually when we were fundraising for our expansion, yes. we talked to quite a few you know investors, and what was always going in my mind is you know we needed an investor that gets it. You know, you know, people who understand what we're trying to build, people who understand our value proposition, and people who understand the market too, because you know, a lot of times foreign investors are like, oh, they're one eighty million Nigerians. Yes. You know, you're just gonna like, you know, be a billion dollar company <laughs> tomorrow. Um, so I really wanted people who understood healthcare, who understood, you know, technology, who understood, you know, the capital market to sort of chain us and get us ready for for really expanding significantly. Hmm. But in terms of the problem you're aspiring to solve, mm -hmm. uh, that you are solving, mm -hmm. do you think you are scratching the surface? Oh, that's very hard to, to really answer. Um, I would say that, yes, you know, every day, like I mentioned, the impact is clear, yeah. but there's still so much to well, do. Of course, there's you're so, still in Lagos so, so much alone. To do. We're still in Lagos alone, but in the next, I mean, by the time this comes out, I'm sure we'll be in other, other, other places. Uh, but yeah, like we are, um, you know, there's, there's just so much to do. There's so much, so much to do in healthcare in Nigeria. And, and I would not say we are there yet, and, but we're on our way. Hmm. And then uh, that, that, that brings me to the lessons you've picked so mm, far mm. trying to run a business mm. there are a lot of women entrepreneurs mm. out there mm. and um, hoping to invest in technology for mm. instance or come mm. into the tech space mm. so what are those things they need to look out for based on what you experienced so far mm. in the past two and a half years mm. i think really I, my my advice would be the same for men and women um, you have to be willing to do the work um, people always because you know people watch this show and say oh you know I have makeup on I have this fancy office you know they would think that that's it, like that's that's it you know that's just the 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 tip of the iceberg there's a lot going on there's a lot of work involved so you really have to be ready to do the work you know and my second thing is don't ask anybody for permission right? mm. don't wait nope they won't give it right uh, if i had waited to get you know permission from the powers that be in healthcare i would not have started this business i would not be able to have like the impact that i have so don't wait for permission and be willing to do the work I awesome would say. Yeah. awesome and then that brings us to women in tech right. of course you you come top of the list in nigeria <laughs> and of you. course we need to have more women in technology yeah. if yeah. we are going to bridge yeah. gender yeah. Uh, gap yeah. Yeah. in the future workplace yeah so how how do you think we need to what more need to be done to have more women like yourself playing big so here's in the, the industry? thing like nigerian women start quite a lot of businesses right so i don't think nigerian women are like strangers to entrepreneurship mm -hmm. the problem that i see in in our market is that a lot of nigerian women stay small right so that, that sense of expansion and scaling your business and growing, that's really like, like missing in the conversation that we have on entrepreneurship for women. And technology is inherently about scaling. You know, if you, if you, once you found you know, a product market fit, you need to scale that product market yes. fit so you can take the market. Um, so I think that's what's missing. Um, and I think that if we can have conversations about that, about helping to scale the small enterprises that women are already starting, 
you see more women in technology. Uh, you see more women doing really interesting things in, in our market. And I think that's what we need to talk about. And that, I, I think that's my passion. And uh, to, to start conversation with my sisters and say, you can scale this business. There's okay. something here. People like what you're doing. You know, scale it, you know. And, 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 and that includes, you know, training people for getting capital, uh, training people for building, you know, technology businesses that can scale. Uh, so that's, there's a bit about that, that that we need to sort of work on. Hmm. Okay, thank you. So uh, finally, I'm going to ask you about the future for life bank yes so what 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 are users expecting from you mm -hmm. going forward and what do you see a decade from now right um so life bank like i mentioned uh, you know we want to get as far as where it's ever needed right it, life bank is not you know just a nigerian company right now it is but you know we're going to be a pan-african company we're going to be a, a global company because this problem exists in virtually every developing country you find this con problem in india you find it in south america you find it in central america you find it in southeast asia you find it all over the world not just africa not just nigeria so i really my vision for life bank is to be a global company solving this problem at scale um, but to do that, we need to be very precise. You know, we need to really build a system that is precise, that high tech. Uh, so we're exploring a lot of different products. We're exploring products around blockchain. We're exploring products around artificial intelligence for more, you know, predictive um, precision in, in prediction. Um, so we're doing quite a lot of work in high tech, high tech work. Uh, so our insights has always been build high tech tools mm -hmm. with using you know artificial intelligence blockchain and those things but deploy it with low tech because really you know <laughs> in our market that's mm -hmm. that's just how it works and, so and you, you already have solutions around low tech exactly that so you're you, deploying exactly you, know. so you can have like a, a, a you know artificial intelligence platform but that gives information to the patient to the, the medical provider with ussd so fusing those two sort of high tech and low tech together allows you to really build things that are interesting in our mm, market. So you're already deploying USSD? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, we have products like our smart bag product. Okay. That is a blockchain um, product that helps improve uh, safety of blood. Uh, so it's basically like it brings transparency into blood testing in, in, in blood banks. Uh, we have an artificial intelligence platform called Flow that basically looks through um, a, a hospital's, you know, history and say, predict how many pints of blood they would need every single day. So it's really, really interesting work that we're doing. Um, and, and yeah, we, we can't wait to sort of show the world what we have up our sleeve. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Us. Thank you. Yes. And that brings us to the end of our show today. I hope you have been able to take one or two things away from this conversation. If you are an entrepreneur, I hope Temi's story has inspired you. Do join us next time for another interesting edition. You can follow me on Twitter at Jonah Obona and then follow us on Facebook at Bounce News Nigeria. You can also click the subscribe button to join us for another edition of Bounce Masterclass. Thank you for watching. Yo, what up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your favorite boy, I'm Oshine. Hey, okay, Mr. Song, is the kingmaker. If we're not at Leo the Silver. Fanika. Angel. Always, Always download. download. Bounce News. Bounce News. Bounce News app from the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. It's fine. Keep bouncing. Keep